So hello, 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 welcome, welcome to the stream. Today we're going to play a little bit of Kaiserreich as Australia. Or the Australi Australasian Confederation between Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we haven't played as these guys yet. Uh, so far in Kaiserreich, we're actually a little bit surprised. I think it's the one, the one Entente power we have not played. Is there anybody else in the Entente uh, that we haven't actually played? I guess we haven't played a South Africa and remained in the Entente, but I think other than that, we played every Entente member. Um, at least every country that starts in the Entente. Except for Australia, which we're going to be uh, rectifying today. So what's the plan? Uh, the plan is just wing it and see where we go. And that's basically it. Uh, we'll go up to speed 5 here, so... Um, let's see, we'll, we'll get our basic researches, of course. We really actually look at our research. We actually got um, research speed of 4%, and we already have direct fire. Very... Have you uh, seen anything with the Russian rework? No, I have not. We'll probably play Russia whenever there's a rework, for sure. I've never seen any country actually start off a basic fire control system, so Australia is a little bit more advanced than the rest of the world, it seems. Um, so, you know, let's get our 1918 equipment. That seems okay. We're starting off with 24 factories. 4, 5, and 15. Not a, um... Not a terrible start. We will, of course, build at least two military factories for right now. Build with both in New South Wales. We have an army of 12 divisions, mostly cavalry. Our army sucks. It's basically trash. Uh, we're probably going to stay the on top for this campaign. We've got 59 ships and we have 110 aircraft. Our army is actually terrible. Uh, we get these guys from New Zealand as well. Have everybody just go into Canberra. You know, stacks, you know, go to, go to Sydney. Go to Sydney for right now. We got a state of the economy, which is going to be industry tax, and then basically all of our um, standard Air Force, Navy, and Army. The political paths are not available for us quite yet, uh, but we're probably going to go for a democratic Australia. We're not going to go syndicalist. We're not going to go kind of independent, uh, not being part of the Entente, because I really don't see how that... I mean, it's too isolationist, and you don't, you don't really want to play a, uh, an isolationist country, except if you're doing it on YouTube or Twitch. I mean, we could also go national populist as well, but we'll, we'll kind of see. No, I, I think let's go democratic. I think that seems completely A-OK. -okay. But we'll go with the economy to begin with. Uh, we will get our decisions, get our free army navy experience. And we are... Are we actually on the location council? No, we're not. Okay. We are, do we? Australia, United States, Germany... Or I have influence. Or, or can I just see influence because I'm in Asia? Invite Hong Kong back into the Crown's protection. Needs to have... So it's conservative. They need to go bankrupt. I mean, we'll, we'll see if we can influence them. I don't know if we'll actually be able to, but we'll see. And all this other stuff. Exploiting resources. We can worry about that later. We do have a decent amount of steel. We got a decent amount of tungsten and a tiny bit of chromium. No oil, aluminum, or rubber, though. And we do have some naval dockyards. With 59 convoys, we're going to go, let's say, two on convoy. And we're just going to throw the rest in the submarines. Um, that seems more than okay for now. We're building infantry equipment one, total artillery. And nothing else at all. We already, wait, do we already stuff? No, that's from a con, that's from a, uh, yeah, we don't have any factories. Okay, or any companies, I should say. So we're just going to get the game uh, running here. The status of the Confederation, formed in 1924 as a result of the Con Consolidation of Resources Act, the Australasian Confederation was a combination of the British Australian Dominions, Australia, and New Zealand, as well as the territories of British New Guinea and Fiji. The years since the Vilda Creek have brought great change and hardship, or strained both society and economy, which in Australia manifests itself in a short reign, a short-lived Melbourne commune. Although disowned by the then-ruling Labour government put down by demobilized Australian Imperial Force veterans, the result in the implication of the emergency protocols, the suspension of elections, and the appointment of William Burdard as Governor General. Then the British Revolution of 1925 shook the Empire to the core, and Australia was unable to prevent the loss of territories to the Germans. More than 10 years on, the situation is still unstable as the economy remains stagnant and dominant dissident grows. Uh, continues to grow with Burdard along with his ally Billy Hughes, Nationalist Party barely holding things together. I'm not too sure how much black money is actually going to affect us as Australia. We're a little bit isolated. In the oncoming election. Elections in the 
Antipodes were suspended by the Merchant Protocols enacted in 1923, which also led to the dissolving of the autonomy of the separate New Zealand Parliament. However, new elections are now set for March this year after Stanley Bruce successfully campaigned for the reintroduction. Governor General Birdward was forced to make this concession when Bruce defeated Hughes for the leadership of the National Party. Bruce's decision not to act as unelected Prime Minister resulted in the expulsion of his faction from the National Party, and Hughes recalled as Prime Minister. However, the public would not accept the governor re uh, reigning on his commitments. Australasia can ill afford to repeat in 1923 as the specter of Melbourne remains fresh in the minds of many. Okay, we're probably just going to go for Democratic. I'm not too sure which party in the, in the Democratic tree we're going to go through. At least looking at the, the focus tree, it doesn't really look like it matters too much. Oh, and we have Observer right. When the British Empire collapsed in 1925, the then governor of Hong Kong invited troops from Germany and other great powers with the presence of China uh, to occupy British concessions and protect them from the Chinese. This sparked a convert conflict between American and Japanese Germans, which was finally ended by America in 1928 when the legation cities, officially known as the International Mandate for the Chinese Concessions, was formed. As is the case throughout the world, uh, though Germany makes use of our imperial possessions, we still theoretically maintain ownership of them. So it is... Uh, in China, where our executive concessions guarantee us a seat on the legation councils, by the same coin, however, the Germans refuse to recognize the government in Ottawa as the responsible British government denies us a vote in Shanghai. As the guarantee of British interests in the Far East, Canberra is generally responsible for the active maintenance of the Chinese concessions. As such, we have influence and the opportunity to try and gain recognitions from our concessions, regain our vote in the council, or at the very least achieve the return of Hong Kong. Get a little bit of political power out of that, I'm completely okay. Yeah, so, so what's our plan? If we're going to be staying on the Entente. Well, Australasia Day. Today's na today the nation is celebrating the Confederation of Australasia. While the Confederacy was not voluntary, having been initially formed by the British invocation of the Con Conservation Resource Act in the before, it still brought many benefits to both Australia and New Zealand. Or such is the common belief. Crowds are lining the streets from one side to the country to the other for to celebrate the occasion. Oh, home sensibility. We'd love to see it. But I mean, what is our plan? If we're gonna say in the Entente, I think one of our first um, objectives basically should be India. When when the mini mini goes to war with the Party Commune or the Prince of Federation, I think it should be our kind of goal to provide naval support and invasion plans to let's say invade Calcutta or invade near Madras. Also, yeah, let's turn off fog of war because it looks terrible. I I think that makes sense for us. I think those are the things that we kind of need to do: just invade. Um, I guess my draw is really the only port around here. I know there's a port in Goa, in Bombay as well. I got a port over here as well. But basically, our, our goal is going to be to navally invade, to provide a, provide a little bit of support for the Dominion of India in the future. And after that, I mean, of course, invade uh, invade Europe. But the Victorian bushfires. The city of Victoria was hit by heavy bushfires in the northeast and southwest because of intense heat and drought over the last few years. Much of rural uh, Victoria has dried up. And plenty of fuel for the flame. The fires at this point are so incredibly intense that the ash and smoke can be seen from New Zealand. Firefighters with the aid of the state government are trying to combat the disaster. The flames threatening the several major cities and causing considerable panic. Well, there goes this ability we got from Australia Day. Just gone. Gone up in a puff of smoke. Get full of charter. Don't really care about that too much. In the passing of King George V. The eldest king of Britain, George V, has finally come to an illness that had plagued him since the revolution swept through the home isles. His son, Edward, has ascended the throne of the British Empire, including that of the Australasian Dominion. While many in Australia mourn, there are others for whom the king's death has resurrected memories of the Wildkrieg and the disaster of Gallipoli in particular. And they have taken onto the streets to demand a separation from the, of the nation from the British crown, as well as the Entente Alliance. And they not even respect more stability loss. When is our election? March of this year. Okay, so I mean, that's actually, that's not um, too far away. Okay, the bushfires have been extinguished. Fires in Victoria have finally been exhausted thanks to the efforts of local firefighters as well as the overdue dense rainfall. This victory has come to the cost of 71 lives, over 1,000 homes destroyed, the burning of almost 135,500 acres of land. Currently, Judge Leonard Stretton has been selected to lead the Royal Commission into what had led to the disastrous fires. The many spec farmers and grazers in rural areas will be responsible for the long-standing practice of burning brush to clear new land. And where is Victoria? Victoria is... 
Because this is New South Wales. Are you Victoria? I'm, I'm not uh, super familiar with states in uh, Australia. New South Wales, Southern Queensland, Central Australia. Where is Victoria? Are you Victoria? You're Victoria. Okay, so it's way down in the south near Melbourne. And there's now war in Afghanistan. Doesn't really concern us too much. I mean, we could fight a little bit of air support. You actually are on the uh, aircraft carriers. Okay, apparently we have aircraft carriers. So what do you want to do? Do you want to reform the bureaucracy? Privatize the failing public sector or liberalize the economy. Market liberalism, social conservatism, or social democracy goes up. I'm not too sure if either of these matters. So let's see. We get... You're economically uh, liberalized. More resource for markets. Negative three things through goods for half a year. Political power change. Stability goes up. You are construction, production, efficiency, and factory output for half a year. And your stability. I think we're going to privatize the failing public sector for right now. Get a little bit of factory output. We need to probably produce some more rifles, I would imagine. Yes, we will. Uh, join the Imperial Conference. Seems completely A-OK -okay to me. And, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll join the war. Why not? What, what do you got to lose, right? Well, we're not going to send any troops. That would be uh, ridiculous. But I will send some aircraft. Which apparently... How does Afghanistan have naval air superiority here? Seems a little bit surprising to me, but okay. But either way, we'll send some aircraft over to India. Should be okay. There is now the Russian Civil War. Usually that's going to mean that the um, the socialists are going to win the war. Because I think they get some sort of buff. Or they don't have they at least don't have a debuff. Organization goes down, recovery rate. You know, when I say that I'm a debuff, I mean, a 30% organization loss is pretty bad. They already measures. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. A special conference of the Labour Party. Today, the Australasian Labour Party convened with a special session in Sydney. The former Premier of New South Wales, Jack Lang, was readmitted into the party after having been excluded for five years. Lang originally left the party and formed his own due to disagreements with the leadership. After dismissal from the government by the contemporary government of New South Wales, Philip Game... He fell out of popularity and sought to rejoin the party. A powerful orator and populist through and through, three minutes of Lang has caused consider, uh, const conservation nation? Uh, amongst the more leftist members of the Labour Party, who alongside the majority of trade union activists see him as more of a social feudalist, uh, inherently hostile to true socialist doctrine. It seems that the Australian Labour Party is headed to a turbulent time given the imminent election. So we lose a little bit of stability. Uh, social democracy gets a little bit stronger in the country. Right now, the most popular party is the uh, UAP, the Social Conservatives. And we'll probably go for the Social Conservatives. Um, reason being, like, I'm, I was thinking about this um, the other day. And I'm like, how often do we play as Social Conservatives in Kaiserreich? I think it's basically never. Maybe, like, one campaign in the four years we played Kaiserreich have we actually been Social Conservative. So maybe we'll go with them this campaign here. Okay, the Australasian Guard. Originally formed in 1925, the Australasian Guard is a staunchly nationalist and jingoistic movement, which traces its roots back to the paramilitary organization, the League of National Security. Comprised of former servicemen returning from the Wilt Creek in the backing of influential Australasians, many of these men helped out put down the 1923 Melbourne Commune. In the, re in the years following the Melbourne uprising, the Guard has continued to support the government, with many supporters joining the extended security forces available to the Governor General, and assisting in suppressing left-wing activities. The coming return to democratic rule has caused an upset amongst the far right, however, who fear the reemergence of the long-suppressed labor movement and that the Nationalist Party, divided as it is, will be unable to maintain the status quo. Due to these factors, the Guard's leader, Eric Campbell, has decided that it will take part in the elections as a center party. Despite their not inconsiderable levels of popular support, our president is unsure what impact they will have. So we're probably, okay, so this war is now over, Afghanistan is just doing its own thing. So yeah, we can already bring our planes back home. It looks like we at least didn't lose too many. And more people are going to gang up on the Russians. That's fine. It, it, it doesn't really matter too much for us. The biggest issue with um, 
with Russia going socialist, though, is definitely going to be Germany. And whether or not Germany can effectively fight a two-front war against the Internationale. Because, I mean, people seem to be of the opinion, uh, at least on, like, Reddit and stuff, that Russia going socialist actually weakens the Third Internationale because the French and the British will put troops on this front line as well. Kind of weakening the border with France, but I'm not too sure how true that actually is. But anyway, the 1936 federal election. The first free election over a decade, many of which are calling for Bruce's election, uh, looked to set a majority for the United Australia Party. However, Labour and, con and the country parties that are campaigning vigorously, while nationalists struggle to uh, retain their core votes, the left voting UAP, and the right declaring that the center Guard Center Party. Many are at least grateful for Campbell Center Party, seemingly having no chance of actually winning, but it seems likely they will make a good showing. Yeah, I think we will go for um, the UAP here. Get a little bit of stability gain. And there we go. We are now so conservative. And you'll be done in about 24 more days, which I think seems pretty good for us. The Australian Guard in the election. The Australian Guard has emerged from the election far stronger than when it went in. Their Campbell Center Party, while failing to take many parliamentary seats, did manage to secure a large percent of the popular vote. Mostly at the expense of the nationalists. Despite this lack of coherent strategy as well as hostile media reception, were clear hindrances for them. And the Syndicalist March. Responding to the election results, which the Labour Party claims were raised against their candidates, radicals supported by the Australian Council of Trade Unions had an illegal march in several of Australia's cities today. They are protesting the continuous oppression of the unions and several of the marches ended with clashes with both the police and local paramilitary groups. All the marches were successfully dispersed, but leaders have sworn that they will continue to resist the new government, and now without freedom, the Australian Confederation cannot truly call itself a democracy. So we have, like, no war support. We have very little, um, stability as well. And a new Governor General. William Birdward's tenure as Governor General saw a vast expansion in powers available to the position which is used to maintain order in Oceania at the expense of democracy and civil liberties. Um, Bird Word, a British uh, general from the Fields Creek, was imposed upon Australia by the Empire fearful of revolt. But times have changed. The newly elected government could use this opportunity to replace him with a native Australasian. While this move would be popular with many, others have suggested that the opportunity exists to invite a member of the royal family to assume the role and thus put Australia to, uh, more firmly within the sphere of the Empire and our follow fellow Ant Entente ally. We lose stability, we gain stability, or we gain a little bit of stability. You know, let's invite a member of the royal family. We got Prince George now in here. Hello, Prince George. Welcome to Australia. Other than that, nothing too, too crazy is going on in the world. I'm assuming, yeah, you've got a lot of volunteer backers from France, Germany, Finland, Canada. It's like, we can probably we can try to... I mean, how many men do you guys have? 25 against 35 to 108. Like, you, you just don't have the manpower. If anything's got to fight a Lash Orda, you might even have to fight um, Finland as well. And I think Transmere can also get in on the action at least a little bit. So I can't imagine they're going to last for too long. But of course, we will <laughs> we'll see. than that. So you're putting aid to the Warlords. Another Imperial Conference. Right now, there's a lot of American influence in the Legation Cities, but of course, that's going to end uh, once they go into a massive civil war. And again, we don't we don't really care what any of the other people in the uh, Entente really has to say. And what, what do we want? Do we construction speed? Maybe. Building our military, which is cheaper infantry equipment and faster training time. I mean, what do we need? We can have, we can actually like double the size of our army, which I think we should do. Infantry division two's got the artillery, and the garrison's bad. The cavalry division's pretty bad as well. Do we do we build artillery? We do build at least a handful. So you know, let's at least get. I don't know, 10 divisions ready to go? Yeah, we'll deploy them. Why not build them near here? I mean, our manpower is probably the uh, the biggest issue we're facing. What do we, what do we want? Do we want... 
I don't know which one we chose. We chose one of them. Um... Okay, there we go. I think we chose to get better weapons, but... Because we do we do need guns, we need aircraft, we just need more military factories as well. We have 10, so I mean, they're building at an okay rate. The coal aluminum's kind of trash. You're kind of trashy, and you're kind of trash. You're all, like, not very good. But we now have a democratic Australia. Thank you. More stability. We're at 37. Political power. Our fancy uh... More stability from you, but you're the 1939 election. Uh, let's, first of all, let's lift martial law. Let's get our stability up. Because, I mean, having low stability is probably not going to be, uh, fantastic. more stability we have, the, uh, the happier we should be. I wonder when you guys are... I mean, what is this? 20% research speed bonus. I mean, it only lasts for a few months. Leading Australian, Australian writer Ian Idris today published his latest novel, The Cattle King. It follows the life of recently deceased Sir Sidney Kidman, an entrepreneur and pastoralist who owned and co-owned large areas of land in Australia, on Australia in his lifetime. Kidman became widely popular due to the support of the government and the will to create a shareable organization. The book looks to be said to be an Australasia bestseller for 1936, and many are drawing parallels between Kidman and the exiled white Rajah, Charles Vita Brook, which is sure to boost Brook's popularity. Okay. Very cool, very cool. But how, how's everybody in chat uh, doing today? 